Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a big, big question that keeps cropping up, and that is how much should you feed your parrot? Constantly crops up. I thought I'd do a dedicated video to address this because it's really important as a topic, and we're going to explore all the various factors of it. So portion control or portioning, proper portioning is really important when it comes to looking after our parrots. It affects their weight, their health, it affects their treat motivation, it affects their just general motivation and well-being. For example, too little food leads to hunger and being underweight. Too much food can lead to hormonal behavior overabundance and also even uh, weight related issues. Pickles is just going down there to play with a toy. Uh, so yeah, so it's very important to properly feed your parrot and understand how much to feed them. Now, portion control with parrots doesn't have to be precise. Now you may find that a bit of a contradiction to what I just said. However, it's just very important to manage it in a rough way. Now I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why and some of the science behind that why um, later on because there aren't just that many guidelines to talk about it. However, the most effective method we find when talking about portioning how much to give our parrots is the tablespoon method. Now with the tablespoon method, and it's something Jason talks about a lot and love, a lot of other people in the parrot community talk about a lot as well, and one thing we sort of like fully support, you have a general rule of thumb and how much you should feed your parrot. Now, with a tablespoon method, Scampi's just flying around enjoying himself. You use one tablespoon of per meal, sorry, per meal, per parrot for a small parrot, two tablespoons for a medium parrot, three tablespoons for large parrots. Now, generally, you want to be feeding uh, two meals a day, so it'll be two tablespoons a day, one in the morning, one in the uh, afternoon or evening for their evening snack. However, this can be adjusted as well, depending on your parrot. Say for example, you have a parrot and one tablespoon is too much. You can reduce it very slightly. If uh, one tablespoon is not enough and you find it empty in their bowl, you can increase it slightly. It's just a rule to go by and we find it very effective and useful for portioning correctly. Now, the best way to monitor this as well is to measure your parrot's weight regularly. We regularly weigh our parrots, so we know what their baseline weight is, and we know if they're gaining too much or going uh, too low, so we can adjust that portion. So say, for example, um, Scampi, even though he's completely fine with weight-wise, for Scampi, we're giving him a tablespoon in the morning, a tablespoon in the afternoon, and we notice he's um, losing a bit of weight. We can increase that portion very slightly and see if that helps as well. If not, then obviously we might have to check into other issues. But it is adjustable, and it's a great rule of thumb to use. Now we love this tablespoon method purely because it is so simple to employ and if you do regularly weigh your parrot, you know exactly what they're getting and how much of it too. But people often ask me about proportions of ingredients as well, you know, how much of this grain or how much of this fruit or how much of this um, vegetable I should have in my parrot's diet. Now that's again quite difficult to assess. And again, it's gonna be right at the end of the video. I promise I will explain a little bit more about why that is. However, the importance is diversity. You want lots of diversity in your parrot's diet and you want to ensure they're getting all of those bases covered through lots of different foods. So for example, again, for our parrots, we have like sprouts, we have uh, chop, we have various vegetables in um, their bowls in the morning and later on they'll get a dry mix with flowers, some grains, some seeds, and all sorts of bits in the evening. So basically we're covering everything. So we're making sure they get all those bases covered. You want to be mindful of proportions as well. For example, I used this example a lot, I used it in a nutrition course recently. If you give a grape as a fruit treat to a macaw, that's quite a reasonable portion. For you know, it's proportional, a grape's okay for them. If you give a grape to a conya, that's the size of their head. So that isn't really a reasonable portion. That is far too much. It may look small to us, but to them it's massive. So you may want to cut that grape into smaller bits and then use them throughout the day or just give them half and bin the rest, whatever. You know, think about proportions and portions and use a bit of common sense with them too. Again, when you're looking at what you should feed your parrot, look at their natural history. There's loads of articles for free online. You can read Google Scholar's a good source. Again, we talked about in our course recently. You can discover a lot by looking at a bird's natural history. You know, you discover what they can eat and then you tailor the diet based on that. But not being afraid to try other things that are healthy for them. There's loads of um, safe lists, there's great books out there you can read. We've referenced them in lots of videos, so I'm not gonna reference them again here, but there's lots of resources out there to help you know roughly what to feed your parrot and what's safe for them and what's not. So Scampi and Pickles don't actually want to be in this video very much. Do you want to come in? Yeah, Pickles is coming to join me, because they've basically been just snacking on a tray behind me and doing a bit of foraging. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go down there now? Okay, that's fine. So we'll carry on talking while Pickles enjoys herself on the chair exploring that. 
So let's talk about individual proportions. Now, a lot of people like to say, I want to see a study on um, what this parrot eats, what this parrot doesn't eat. Very difficult to do. You, can, you do have some isolated studies in small sample groups, or again, like natural history examples, people have observed what parrots have eaten in the wild and taken inspiration on that for the home diet. However, most studies that are used for parrots and what they should be appropriately fed are based on chickens. And that includes the pellet studies. Many of them are based on chickens. There's not many dedicated parrot studies to know what X and Y a parrot needs. And that's something to bear in mind. When next time you say to someone, show me a study, they may not be able to because it doesn't exist. Now, everyone would love there to be more studies on this. However, there's not enough funding. And when there is funding, it tends to be vested interests from various companies that are punting their own products. So uh, we need more of it, basically. We need more studies. We need more studies to investigate what they do, how they select their foods, just more. We know a good baseline, but we don't know enough. Now to lead on from that, we can take a good guess at what sort of macronutrients a parrot will need. And when I talk about macro, that means bigger nutrients, basically. So that means fats, uh, carbs, Fats, carbs, and proteins. There we go. Uh, I studied this recently, and um, you can take it. You can take a good um, rough punt at that. I did as well in my recent course, where I actually had to uh, sort of provide a diet plan for a cockatiel. Macronutrients are easier to balance and it's easier to work out. But when you talk about micronutrients like vitamins, minerals, etc., it's just not going to happen. You can't adequately portion that sort of thing. You can't say, I'm going to get this percentage of this into my parrot. What you have to do is, again, go back to diversity. You want to get a good balanced diet for those macros, you know, a bit of fat, a bit of carb, depending on what sort of animal you're talking about. You don't want to give too much carbs to a carnivore, but again, with parrots, it's not an issue. And then you want a bit of protein as well. And then when you look at your micros, you want to just give lots of diversity. Just cover all your bases, give them a lot of different things so you will know they're getting it. And you can, again, monitor it. You know, it's not all about, it's about our laziness sometimes. You can't just uh, give them a bowl of pellets or you can't just give them a bowl of dry mix or even a bowl of um, vegetables. Just say, right, off you go, enjoy. Where do you want to go? Pickles is so fussy today. You want, the, you want to sort of look at what they're eating and then tailor it, measure those portions, provide different things at different days, make it more appealing, etc., etc. There's lots of things we can do to encourage our parrots to eat what they need to eat because they are fussy sometimes. And by fussy, I don't mean like they're going to reject things. We just need to put more effort in, basically. So again, I hope that explains things in a more um, eloquent way than in the past. It does cover those common questions, you know. Just to summarise, you want to provide lots of diversity, you want to use a tablespoon method to repeat one tablespoon per meal for small birds, one ta two tablespoons per meal for medium, three for large. You want to add lots of diversity in the diet, you want to me uh, constantly measure weight. Studies are not the be all and end all, although we want more so we can feed our parrots correctly as well. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and educational. If you have any questions, as always, happy to hear from you. If you want more diet related videos, we do have more. Um, Sophie also recently put out a video interview with avian vet Jamie Abate and Dr. Jason Crean. I was in that too. I'll leave a card for that now. Well worth watching. But in the meantime, from me, Scampy, and Pickles, take care and have a really nice day.